Good morning. This is KT Douglas welcoming you for our worship for our non-campus live stream at St. Paul CME Church. We are located in between Middleton and Lane Avenue with the Reverend Dr. Claude A. Bettis as our senior pastor. You can view us on our Facebook page, St. Paul CME Church, to see the service. We hope you enjoy. Savior Jesus Christ on this seventh Sunday of Easter as we, on this Sunday, the ascension of the Lord. Today is the day of the, we recognize and remember the ascension of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And we certainly welcome you here today, this morning, uh, to our Facebook Live online campus of the St. Paul CMA Church, Jackson, Tennessee. Lane College campus. We are a little hour behind starting today. To God be the glory for the things that He has done. We certainly want to recognize and remember our veterans and all of those who have served this country and given their life uh, for the Lord. And we thank God for them. Give their life for the country. We thank God for them. Amen, amen. We welcome you. I see you chiming in. Let us know you are present. We are also live on our conference call number. Line is open. We hope that you can hear us. Those of you who are <coughs> on, on the uh, conference call, we thank God for you as well. Let us know you're here. Send us some hearts, some love. Amen, amen. We get ready to get started here. We thank God for all of you. Let us pray. Eternal God, our Father, we come this morning, this Sunday morning again. We thank you, O oh Lord, for your presence, your spirit, your anointing to fall fresh on us right now. Speak to us, Lord, and speak through us so the words of our mouth and the meditations of our heart be acceptable in thy sight, O oh Lord, thy rock and thy redeemer. In the name of Jesus, bless those who are listening and watching here today, Lord, that we might be a word of hope today uh, for all of them in the midst of this pandemic. We pray right now in Jesus' name, amen. 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 My brothers and my sisters, we invite your attention today. There is a word from the Lord. We invite your attention today to the gospel that is uh, recorded for this seventh Sunday of Easter. Uh, we, we invite your attention today as we recognize the ascension of the Lord uh, after Jesus' resurrection he lived among and ministered. And so we want to invite your attention to the gospel according to St. Luke. St. Luke chapter 24. St. Luke chapter 24. Amen. St. Luke chapter 24 and beginning at verse 44, St. Luke chapter 24, and beginning at verse 44, listen to the word of God. It says, then he said to them, these are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you 
that everything written about me in the law of Moses and the prophets and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures and said to them, thus it is written that the Christ should suffer and on the third day rise from the dead. And that repentance and forgiveness of sin should be proclaimed in his name to all nations beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. And behold, I'm sending the promise of my Father upon you. But stay in the city until you are clothed with power from on high. Then he led them out. He is the ascension. Then he led them out as far as Bethany and lifted up his hands. He blessed them. And while he blessed them, he parted from them and was carried up into heaven. And they worshipped him and returned to Jerusalem with great joy and were continually in the temple blessing God. Amen. Amen. Blessing God. We want to say a few words today, this morning, from this thought. Jesus has gone up and he is still blessing us. Jesus has gone up and he is still blessing us. Going up young. To be with my Lord. Going up yonder. The ascension of Christ. The ascension of Christ. Amen. Amen. We welcome you. Join in this morning with us. Join in with us. Amen. Amen. That 53 third that 50th through the 53rd verse is our main text uh, for this morning. It says, and he led them out as far as Bethany, and he lifted up his hands and blessed them. Now it came to pass while he blessed them that he was parted from them and carried up into heaven. And they worshipped him and returned to Jerusalem with great joy and were continually in the temple praising and blessing God. Amen, 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 amen. So my brothers and my sisters here in this text of Luke chapter 24, we have an account of Jesus' ascension into heaven. After the resurrection and him ministering for 40 days, we've come through Easter and all of that. And so in this 24th chapter of Luke, uh, it's divided into sections and the first 12 verses talk about the resurrection of Christ. Amen. And we dealt with that during that time. Then it talks about he appears, appears to two disciples on the way to Emos. Amen. We talked about that during that time. Verses 13 through 27. And makes himself known to them. Verses 28 through 35. And then this 24th chapter it talks about Christ appears to the other disciples. Amen. Verses 36 through 49. And so here today we're dealing with Christ, his ascension. Verses 50 through 53. Amen. And so uh, we want to first say to us today that uh, before Christ ascended, 
back to his father, Jesus gave instructions to the disciples and the church. Jesus gave instructions to the disciples and the church. In other words, he was saying to them, uh, before I go, uh, there's something I need to tell you. Uh, before I go, I need to give you some instructions. And so there in the text, verse 44, he said to them, these are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you. That everything written about me in the law of Moses and the prophets and the Psalms must be fulfilled. And so the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms, they, my brothers and sisters, represent the three major divisions of the Hebrew Bible. Uh, and so, and so, and so, in other words, as I told you before, that Jesus is the theme of the whole Bible. And so Jesus now did for the wider group of disciples uh, essentially what he had already done for the two on the road to Emos. What did he do? He explained the scriptures. Amen, amen. He explained the scriptures. And so, in other words, he gave them insight. Amen, amen. We talked to you about that in Bible study, insight. Jesus, in other words, gave them into the word of God. Yeah, insight. He gave them into the word of God. He refers them to the word which they had heard from him when he was with them. Amen. Verse 44. And so, oh, my brothers and sisters, what are you saying? We should better understand what Christ does if we did but better remember what he said. Amen, somebody. Let me see that again. We, we, we should better understand what Christ does. We, in order for us to understand what he has done, if we did better Remember what he said, amen. And so the several parts of the Old Testament, each of them uh, things concerning Christ, then the several parts of this Old Testament uh, concerning Christ. And so by an immediate uh, present work on their minds, he gave them to apprehend the true meaning of the Old Testament prophecies of Christ. Oh, yes. And, uh, he wanted them to understand the, uh, the, the, the true meaning of the Old Testament prophecy. He wanted them to understand what the Psalms were saying. And, and, and so, and so, verse 45, he says, Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures, amen, amen, amen. And so, and so for order for you to be able to understand and comprehend what Jesus has, what he's doing and what he's done and to remember what he said, he's got to open your mind, amen, to understand the scriptures because especially today, we live in a time where our minds are clouded with a bunch of stuff and our minds are clouded with a bunch of things and mess. And so, and so here, here he was in, in this text, in this passage of Luke 24. Here he is uh, to them, 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 them wa wavering and weak disciples telling them in verse 45, then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures, amen, amen. So in Jesus, in Jesus' discourse or encounter, if you will, with the two disciples, he took the veil from off the text by opening the scriptures. Here he took the veil in this passage of Luke 24 from off the heart. By opening the mind. Amen. Amen. He's got to open your mind. 
Jesus Christ by his spirit operates on the minds of humanity. Mm -hmm. He has access to our spirits and can immediately influence them. And Christ's way of working faith in the soul is by opening the understanding. Amen. Stay with me if you will. And so Jesus comes into the soul by the door. Christ's scholars and theologians and never learn above their Bibles in this world, but they need to be learning still more and more out of their Bible. What are you saying, Pastor? We, 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 we will never know more than God and we'll never understand more than God. And when God opens our minds, we understand and can receive what he wants us to receive but we are never above our Bibles. We are never above the word of God, but we ought to be learning disciples, receiving more and more out of our Bibles. Amen. That's why it's important for you to be a part of Bible study. Amen, somebody. I wish somebody would say amen. Then the Bible says, uh, yes, yes, yes. Then he says to us, here, 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 here. Yes, he says to us. So Jesus gave instructions to the disciples and the church before he went. And the next thing he gives, Jesus, Jesus gives instructions uh, to be witnesses. He gives instructions to be witnesses. He gives instructions to be Witnesses, verse 48, verse 48 of the text says, you are witnesses of these things. Amen. Somebody said you saw something. We, we, we are to carry the notice of them to all the world. You are fully assured of these things yourselves. You are eye and ear witnesses of them. And so go and tell the world of them. Amen. The world is our parish. And you ought to be living witnesses of these things. You, you, somebody ought to be a witness of how God has been so good to you and how he has blessed you and made a way for you. You ought to be witnesses of him. You ought to be able to tell somebody how God has made a way for you. Witnesses of these things. We witness what Christ has done in the church and witness what Christ has done in our life. And so he tells them in verse 48 as he's getting ready to go, you must give you must be witnesses of these things. Then, then, then if you will uh, Jesus gives instructions on what we must preach. Amen. He gives instructions on what we must preach. Amen. He gives instructions on what we must preach. Verse 46 and 47 of the text says, and, and he and said to them, Thus it is written that the Christ, the Messiah, should suffer and on the third day rise from among the dead. And that repentance with a view to and as a condition of forgiveness of sins should be preached in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. And so what it's saying to us that uh, we must preach the gospel. We must take our Bibles along with us and must show people how it was written on, on old concerning the Messiah and the glories and graces of his kingdom and then must tell them how all this was fulfilled in the Lord Jesus. Oh, yes, yes, yes. So we must preach 
the gospel. Somebody needs to hear the gospel in 2020 in the midst of pandemic, in the midst of COVID-19. We must preach the gospel. We must remind the folk that he's a healer, that we must preach the gospel. We must remind people that he's a provider. We must preach the gospel, the good news, for the gospel is summed up for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son and whosoever believe in him should not perish but have everlasting life. And so when you say, Pastor, I'm saying, go and tell him that he was dead and is alive and lie and lives forevermore and has the keys of death and the brave, go and tell them, the great gospel duty of repentance must be pressed on the children of humanity. Repentance for sin must be preached in Christ's name and by his authority. Yes, go and tell all the people that they must turn to the service of God in Christ. Their hearts and lives must be changed. Go and tell a guilty world that there is hope for them. Oh yes, oh yes, we need to go and tell somebody that the lame walk and the blind see and the deaf can hear. Tell somebody that even though there's nearly 100,000 folk who have died from COVID-19, there's some still there, some have been healed, some have been blessed, some have uh, being protected, that lives are still being provided for. Folks still have shelter in spite of what's going on. Go and tell somebody about the goodness of the Lord. And then, then, then he gives instructions for who do we preach to? Amen. Instructions for who do we preach to? Verse 47 of the text says, we must preach to this among all nations. Amen. That's why the gospel says, for God so loved the world. He didn't just say Jackson, Tennessee, or the state of Tennessee, or America, but all nations. We must disperse ourselves, the church, and carry this light, the light of Christ. That's why, that's why I've been saying since we were children, this little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine everywhere I go, I'm going to let it shine. And we must carry this light along with us wherever we go, the prophets had preached repentance and remission to the Jews, but the apostles and us must preach to them to all the world. Oh, yes, 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 yes. Who do we preach to? Everybody. Oh, yes, oh, yes. Everybody needs to hear a word from the Lord. Everybody waiting on a word from the Lord. We must preach the gospel to everybody. Then then, then, my brothers and sisters, oh yes, there is help and assistance for us when we preach. Amen. There's help and assistance for when we preach. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. There's help and assistance for us when we preach. Amen, amen. Verse 49, verse 49 says to us, verse 49 says to us, and behold, I will send forth upon you what my Father has promised, but remain in the city, Jerusalem, until you are clothed with power from on high. There is help and assistance.
for us when we preach. And behold, I will send you. Amen. Good to see you, Pastor Dalton. Amen. Uh, forth what my father has promised, but remain in the city until you are clothed with power on high. Amen. Here, Jesus assures them. He assures them than us that in a little time the Holy Spirit should be poured out on them and the church in greater measures than ever. And we will be furnished with all those gifts and graces. Those who receive the Holy Spirit are endued with power from on high. Oh, my brothers and sisters, you got to, when you are witnessing, when you are preaching, when you are teaching, when you are proclaiming God's word, when you are telling somebody about the goodness of the Lord, you've got to have power from on high. You've got to have Holy Ghost power. And he, the Spirit of God should be poured out on them and all of us in the church in greater measures than ever, especially in 2020. We've got to have this Holy Spirit among us and we need to be endued with a power from on high. We can't be do this by ourselves. We can't serve by ourselves. We got to have power from on high. Oh yes. We, we must be Christ's ambassadors. Something ought to get a hold of you. Every now and then. Yes. Yes. It ought to be like the prophet John Nyer says. It's like fire. Shut up in my bones. And so, so, so we are, we are Christ's ambassadors. We must Stay until we have our powers. You can't be in a hurry for the Lord. The preachers must tarry. The late folks must tarry till they be endued with power from on high. He said, wait there uh, in Jerusalem, in the city, until you are clothed to your dress, not with these old raggedy clothes, to your clothes, not, not with some famous designer, till you are clothed with the power of the Holy Ghost makes you cry when you don't feel like crying, make you shout when you won't, don't want to shout. And so we must be endued. Stay there. You know, there was a time in the church when, when you had what they called a mother's bench and you would sit there back in the country till something got a hold of you. Then you would finally get up and come forth. So my brothers and sisters, there's help and assistance for us when we preach. Jesus gave these instructions before he said, I've got to go. Then Jesus, the part here that we recognize today, Jesus' ascension into heaven. Jesus' ascension into heaven. Solemnly Faithfully, Christ takes leave of his disciples. He says to them, really, I've been with you and it's time to go back to my father. I've died on the cross. They ridiculed me. I've been through a garden of Gethsemane. I, I, I looked and saw in a bitter cup and asked this cup to pass from me. I've suffered and bled. I've been pissed. In my side, they nailed me in my hands and they put a crown of thorns on my head. And here I am, I've got to leave you now. Jesus is telling us. And so he says in verse 50, and that, that, that the text says in verse 50, then he conducted them. He instructed them out as far as Bethany. Sometimes God got to take you out into a place where he could deal with you. And lifting up his hands. Oh, hallelujah. He invoked a blessing on them. Oh, yeah, yeah. He, he, he's gone up. 
but he's still blessing us. He invoked a blessing on them and it occurred that while he was blessing them, the Bible says he parted from them and was taken up into heaven. Oh yeah, sometimes it looked like Jesus is going away from you, but he's still blessing you because he wants you to stand up on your own two feet to be able to do what you need to do. And the Bible says in these verses here, they don't worship him and they, they were worshiping him and went back to Jerusalem with great joy. Lord have mercy. Oh yes, when God blesses you, you ought to have joy in your heart. Joy to do some things. And they, the Bible says that they were continually in the temple celebrating with praises and blessings and extolling God. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Well, well, it ain't time for us today in 2020. Right about now to go back into the temple. I don't care what 45 says. It ain't time to go back into the temple. But wherever you are right now on Facebook Live or at home, you can, you can praise him in your own temple. I wish somebody said amen here. Yeah. You can shout with him in your own bedroom, in your own kitchen at the table. You can praise God because he gone up and he's sending down some blessings for you. Oh, yes, yes, my brothers and sisters. What happened here was uh, that Jesus had business to do in both worlds. Yes, he had business to do in both worlds. And accordingly, it came from heaven. Oh, yes, to earth in his incarnation, in his flesh. You remember when he was born in a manger and wrapped in swaddling clothes only to dispatch his business here, to spread his ministry on earth, to heal some folk, to bless some folk while he walked around here. And then, having finished this, oh yes, he returned to heaven to reside there. Oh yeah, yeah, he returned to heaven to reside there. And that's where he lives. And so Christ, my brothers and sisters, I'm through, about through now. But Christ ascended from Bethany near the Mount of Olives. There was a God in which his sufferings began. There he was in agony. Oh yes, you got to suffer before you get blessed. Those that would go to heaven must ascend there thither from the house of sufferings and sorrows. You got to go through some things before you get to heaven. And the disciples did not see him rise out of the grave. His resurrection could be proved by their seeing him alive afterward. Lord have mercy. They saw him when he came into an upper room. They saw him. They told old oh, even doubting Thomas, the Lord has been here with us. And, and so Thomas didn't want to believe him, so he came that next week and said, yes, Thomas, look here at the holes in my hands and the holes in my feet and the hole in my side. They pierced me in my side, but they saw him ascend into heaven. I heard one scripture say, why do you stand there gazing up into the sky? Because that same Jesus is coming back again and they have proof of his ascension. He ascended into heaven. They could not otherwise have a proof of his ascension. So from the Bible says that he talks about he lifted up his hands and he blessed them. Lord have mercy. Aren't you glad that he's lifted his hands to bless you? And so he did not go away. He did not go up yonder in displeasure. But he went in love. God loves us. Jesus loves us. He left the blessing behind him. And as he rose, so he ascended by his own power. And so and so and so, my brothers and sisters, they worship Jesus. You and I ought to worship Jesus. This fresh display of Christ. 
Christ's glory drew from them fresh acknowledgments. They returned to Jerusalem with great joy. And the glory of Christ is the joy of all true believers. Even while they are here in this world, while waiting for God's promises, we must go forth to meet them with our praises. Even in the midst of a pandemic, and nothing better prepares the mind for receiving the Holy Ghost. Tears are silent, sorrows are sweet and allayed, and hopes kept up. And this is the ground of Christian boldness at the throne of grace. Yea, the Father's throne is the throne of grace to us because it is also the throne of our mediator. And our mediator is Jesus Christ. And so my brothers and sisters, let us rely on his promises and plead them to other folks. Let us attend his ordinances. Praise and bless God for God's mercies. Set our affection on things above and expect the Redeemer's return to complete our happiness. And I heard somebody saying, Amen. Even so, Lord Jesus, come. Come with all of thy quickening power and kindle the frame of sacred love and touch these cold hearts of ours. I'm going up yonder one of these old days to be with my Lord some glad morning when this life is over, all of us will ascend to Christ in heaven. So my brothers and sisters, that's my message to you today. We thank God for your presence. We thank God for you chiming in with us on Facebook Live. Jesus has gone up, but he's still blessing us. Going up yonder, to be with my Lord, the ascension of Christ. He's ascended, but he's still watching us. He's ascended, but he still takes care of us. He's ascended, but he still provides for us. He's ascended, but he still heals us. In the name of Jesus, we thank God for you. Meet us again this week in our Bible study on Wednesday evening at 6.15. We thank God for your presence. And if you will, bless this ministry through Givelify. You may bless this ministry through mail. Either way it goes, you may bless this ministry. We invite you to come and be a part of us. You may come by on Sunday morning and bring your tithes and offerings. And so now we pray for the bereaved family. We pray for the sick and shut in. We lift them up. We remember our soldiers, our veterans, those who serve the military. Remember to stay safe. Remember, remember to wear your mask to protect yourself from harm and danger. Remember to wash your hands. Remember to keep your distance. Before us, we want folks to be healed. We want folks to be blessed. So this is our message today. Jesus has grown up and he is still blessing us. We say to you, Facebook family and those on the conference call, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon each and every one of you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace right now and forevermore. And the people of God said amen. We hope you enjoyed today's service and give our thanks for attending. Join us again next Sunday for St. Paul Online Campus live stream. Remember this, Hebrew says, whatever life brings, 
we can be assured that the one who rescued us from our greatest spell stands ready to help us in our times of greatest need. Enjoy your week and stay blessed.